thank you for joining us today for this discussion on RFID tag filtering. My name is Curtis Halstead and I am the RFID product specialist here at Purple and Fuchs. In this webinar, we'll be going over the following contents. Why we use UHF RFID, multiple read versus single reads, why and when do we need filtering, different types of RFID filtering, including power adjustment, power sweep functions, RSSI filtering, and filter masks. So why use UHF RFID? Well, today UHF RFID is becoming more and more popular in applications where short range systems were typically the norm. This is because of multiple advantages that UHF systems have, such as much longer ranges, up to five to six meters, lower cost tags, the least expensive tags can be purchased in bulk for pennies. Flexible installation due to the increased range and the ability to read multiple tags at one time. Your typical multi-read application would be something like you see in the pictures here, a tote or a container filled with light parts where we want to track and trace. A single read applications are more common on larger products like vehicle bodies where we want to stay away from the product and are only presented with one tag at a time. So why and when do we need filtering? Well, the simple answer would be when only one tag is to be read, but there are other tags close to that tag, or when we want to read multiple tags at a time, but not all the tags that are in the read field at once. The types of filtering we're going to go over today are power settings, RSSI filtering, and data filter masks. These are the three most common ways we do filtering on our products. The first type we will discuss is the power adjustment. All of our UHF readers at Pepperell and Fuchs have the ability to adjust the transmitted power. This allows us to tune the transmitted power to a setting that will allow us to pick up the tags we want to read while keeping the power low enough that we aren't picking up tags that are further away. This is by far the easiest and most common method to use. As you can see in the graphic, the higher we set the transmitted power, the further away we can read the tags. Typically what is done at installation is to gradually keep increasing the power till the tags we want to read are recognized. For better read reliability, we would then continue to raise the power until we find a power setting where we can consistently read the tag, but without going high enough on the power setting that we're gonna be reading any of the unwanted tags. These settings can be made either through the PLC, the web interface, or the IDENT control software. In the pictures, you can see the parameter array from the PLC where we can set the power. And on the right, we can see the interface from the embedded web server, which is simply a slide bar, but achieves the same effect of changing our power settings. In addition to the manual power adjustment, we can also set a power sweep. Power sweep allows the transmit power to be increased in configurable steps until the tag is found. This is done by adding the power sweep settings into the fields, starting with the lowest power setting at the top. As you can see, the reader will first attempt to read the tag at 50 milliwatts, then 100 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts, and so on. It will keep raising the power until the tag is found. This is a quick and easy way to find the tag that is closest to the reader. Above, you can see the parameter array from the PLC. On this slide, you can see the same settings from the IDENT control software if you aren't using the PLC to change the parameters of the reader. The next method we'll be looking at is RSSI filtering. So what is RSSI filtering? RSSI stands for Received Signal Strength Indicator. When the chip in the RFID tag is energized by the reader, it records the intensity of the power it gets from the reader. So the RSSI value is the signal strength that the tag saw from the reader, not what the reader is getting back from the tag. This value is recorded in dBm or decibel milliwatts. RSSI filtering uses the value of the return signal strength to help determine the distance from the tag to the reader. The reason I say help is because RSSI is not solely influenced by distance. In the pictures we have here, you can see the heat map of a short range RFID system on the left and the heat map of a long range system on the right. The low range system has a nice concentric and uniform lobes of the transmitted power. 
whereas the long range system on the right is scattered and inconsistent. This is because of the distance, power, and frequency band we use with these systems. As you can see in this image, we have cold spots that are closer to the reader than some hot spots. In those cases, a tag in the far hot spot is going to record a higher RSSI than the tag in the closer cold spot. So we need to remember that this is a very helpful tool we can use, but it is not the end all be all. When we want to get the RSSI data back from the tag, we have to first enable the additional information parameter either in the PLC or the IDENT control software. This will tell the tag to send back the recorded RSSI along with the normal data that we would expect back. You can see the format of the additional data string is the channel number, info type, RSSI value, transmit channel, and transmit power. And in the picture left, you can see the data string as it comes back in the RFID control software. It is important to remember that the RSSI value is a good tool for filtering, but is not a perfect indicator due to the nature of radio wave propagation. So like we saw in the heat map, remember. And factors that can influence the RSSI are physical items in the transmission field, especially something that is metal. Different types of tags will not return the same values at the same distance. Scattering of the transmission field, like we saw on the heat map, and manufacturing defects of the tag antenna. So tags of the same type and same manufacturer typically return the same value, but not always. The last method we will talk about are filter masks. A filter mask allows to include or exclude tags based on the data that they contain. This is especially helpful when reading multiple tags at once. This allows us to see all the tags that match our search criteria without picking up tags we don't want. Up to three filters can be activated at the same time, and each filter can be logically linked as an AND or an OR. It is possible to customize the filter with various parameters, which gives the ability to create filters from very simple to very complex. We can set which memory area of the tag we want to filter by, either the EPC, the TID, or user data. We can select if the filter will be used to include or exclude the tags, and we can link the filters logically with ands and ors. With truncation, we can choose if we want all of the tag data sent or just the data that matches our filter to be sent. And then of course, we can choose which byte of the tag we want to start looking at for that filter mask and how many bytes we want to look at as well. And lastly, what is the actual data that we want our filter to look for? There are many different methods for filtering out tag responses. Be sure to keep all of these methods in mind when faced with a difficult application. Questions you want to make sure and ask are, do the tags have unique data that we can filter from unwanted tags? If so, then a filter mask would work for that. Is there enough spacing between tags to adjust or sweep the power? And are the tags of the same type and manufacturer? Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, you can always reach us here at Pepperell and Fuchs. I am Curtis Halstead. Thank you for joining.